And we are live. Hello and welcome to The Lion Show. I'm your host, your favorite business coach, Robert Lyon. Today we have the great pleasure of talking to Kristen and she is a author, a coach, a podcaster, um, and an amazing woman. And she's just all about helping you balance your things. So why don't you introduce yourself and tell everybody kind of who you are and what you're up to? Well, first of all, Robert, thank you so much for having me. It's so nice to connect with other podcasters and other entrepreneurs. And um, you're right, I'm, I'm a homeschooling mom of three. And I have a senior this year, and uh, we just finished we just finished high school math today, so we're we're celebrating. He's he's checked that box off. That thing is done. Um, so yeah, so I so I do that. Um, I published my first book last year, March. Um, my book signing and launching was amid everybody in my neighborhood and community going to get toilet paper. I was signing books, and everybody else is like, "Where we can't come? We got to go get things." So it's been a it's been for everybody. It's been a, a crazy you know, year coming up on a year, but um, amazing, amazing connections with people like yourself and um, being able to dive deep into creative work, which I love. Yeah. So my secret confession, I probably could use some help balancing all the things. I'm one of those people that is like all over the place, man. I got, I got businesses and podcasts and all sorts of stuff going on. So what is necessarily like all the things and how did that kind of come to be? And just kind of, what does that look like? Sure. So I wrote this book called All the Things. And what I'm going to share with you that I hope you have paper and pencil because you're going to be taking some notes, Robert. Okay, you're good. You got an A plus for being prepared. <laughs> All right. So so the book, All the Things, really just was my, I, I challenged myself to put my heart out there about all the things that I thought motherhood and parenting was going to be about. And then what it really is right. It's you think you're going to show up and have all these things and be ready to hit the ground running. And really the most important things now that I'm 17 years into parenting aren't things at all, right? They're a relationship. They're allowing yourself grace for, you know, that space for grace as a parent to not lose yourself um, because all of us find ourselves in that place um, along the way sometimes. And so after I published the book last year, I started kind of thinking, I launched my podcast, I was doing all these real things. And I thought about what people really need right now. Um, And not just necessarily during COVID, but just like yourself, you're a business person, you know, you're doing all of these things, and you have really good work that you're bringing to the table. But that means that to do that well, you have to know how to balance your things. So so I have a little I have a very high tech visual for you here. Robert. Ooh. Okay. I know. Be ready. Wait, let me explain okay. this to the okay. listeners. It says things. <laughs> yes. It says things. And, um, and I upgraded from dry erase to it's actually on there permanently. So, um, so this is a little board and it says things it's an acronym. Okay. So here's, here's the thing about your things. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter, you know, your, where you are in terms of you're a senior in high school or you're you know, a senior citizen getting AARP literature in the mailbox. We all have the same things that we're going to talk about. And if we we need to know how to balance them to show up strong, we'll always show up. But if we don't show up strong for ourselves, for those we love and those we're called to serve, we're a hot mess. And that we'll talk about that, what happens when we don't balance these, because that's a whole nother problem that we have. So the, the T in our things is our time. We mm. all have the same amount of time in a day and how we use that time and how we carve out that daily mode of operation. Um, that's really important. And that's, it's, that's why it's first, you know, it comes first in the word, but it's also first because if we don't have a good handle on that, then none, none of the other things can actually happen. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, the H stands for our health, emotional, spiritual, physical, um, mental, our health is our second thing that we have to learn how to balance. The I stands for interpersonal relationships and our core circle, the people who are on that next ring and so forth and so on out. The N stands for saying no. And this is an area that I've really struggled with over the years and setting those healthy boundaries and feeling really guilty when, you know, when I take on more than I can or that I should. And the G stands for where you're going and how you're growing personally, professionally, and the S stands for service to self and others. Okay. So here's what I want you to think about, because a lot of times people, you know, you, you, I might meet someone and they might say, Oh, I have the T down. The T's good. I'm, I'm really good. I got this app on my phone. I use a paper planner. I got my time down. Okay. 
and then they say my age is good. You know, January started and I had some really good goals. I've been going to the gym. I've been walking, whatever. Okay. Somewhere along this, you're going to have an area that you're not so good at or a couple that you're not so good at. So I want you to envision it's not really like a domino effect when we don't have these balanced. It's really more, and for those of you who are listening, it's like a wrecking ball. So I have like a little ball that I'm going to put down here. So let's just say that my eye, my interpersonal relationships, not so strong. I'm really not showing up well for the people in my life. Um, and, and it just kind of starts having a little instability and it just really can start, you know, let's say I'm not showing up well for my kids and I'm having issues with, you know, behavior or whatever, then it kind of can infiltrate that end of not setting healthy boundaries. I might let them do things that really they shouldn't be doing, but I'm feeling guilty because I'm really not there for them. I'm not showing up the way that I want to. And then that it can affect my emotional health, my mental health. So it actually ends up going back and forth and it, it, it knocks everything out. Everything that you've already had under control, it just can start affecting all of those, all of those six pillars that we have. Um, so to, to, to really show up well for ourselves, we have to look at those six pillars and we have to look really, really carefully at, first of all, our time. And to do this work, this is not for the faint at heart because you really need to dig deep. And so for example, I'm gonna ask you, Robert, you said that you have trouble balancing your things. So of these things that I just mentioned, which one, like you were like, mm, yep, that's me really struggling with that one. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I liked, I think it was probably saying no. Um, okay. and then, um, a little bit of maybe health and you to probably take better, but yeah, saying no time and health. Like those ones are like, they're yelling at me right now. When I'm okay. Like, <laughs> All right. So they're like, rah, rah, rah. Okay. Yeah. So here's the deal. If you don't have these, first three under, you know, you don't, you, then really, how are you going to be able to do a lot of personal growth? Because you're not really going to be getting as much out of what you could be doing. If you don't have, you know, if you're not healthy, if you're not eating well, you're not going to have as much mental energy, you're not gonna have as much mental clarity, you're not going to have your, your take isn't going to be as full for you to be able to do as much creative work and share the message with people that really need to hear it, you're going to have faster and, and burn out even faster and sooner, it can affect your long term health. Um, I had a health crisis a couple months ago, I've been struggling with diverticulitis for probably the last couple of years. And it wasn't until recently that it kind of got a name to it. But it would knock me out for sometimes two weeks at a time. And this last mm. time, the medicine wouldn't even cut cut it like normally I pop a couple, of, you know, antibiotics, and I'm like pushing ahead, right. And this time, no, I couldn't show up for myself. I could ha hardly get out of bed some days. I was horrible at homeschooling those two weeks. I, my patience was so thin because I was in pain. I didn't feel well and I couldn't eat well because the last thing I wanted to do was eat. All right. So, so it just, it, that wrecking ball just came and it just kind of knocked everything down that I had worked so hard for. Um, and so that kind of like pushes you to the service to self and others. You, you, you're, you're not able to step up and do the work that you're being called to do well. We then, we then show up, but then we're showing up in such a way that the back of our head, we're like, you could have done that better. Did you see, first of all, did you see what you physically look like today? Yeah, not a really good, pretty sight. You're kind of like a hot mess express trying to do what you're doing. And if people only knew what you were really dealing with and what you were really, you know, so it's just, so then that negative self-talk starts and then guess what? It affects our emotional health, it affects our mental health. So it's, and it, it then just kind of cycles back around. Um, so let me ask you, um, one of the things that I have my clients do is do a time audit. Have you ever done a time audit, Robert? I mean, I've heard, you know, everybody kind of tells you to do it. I haven't done it though, where you like you track every 30 minutes or every hour of what you do every single day. Yes. I, I always, I've always wanted to. So now you can yell at me and tell me okay. to do it. Tell me, tell okay. me it, it works. So this I'll, is what I'll I want it. you to do. This is your homework, right, Robert. And I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to follow up with you and we're going to see how well you do. So I love this planner. This planner is one that I found this year. Um, this is a day designer planner. I, this is not, I, I'm not a, a affiliated with them, but what I liked about it is I wish I should be probably what I liked about this planner is that it has it, the time listed here, but then it has spaces mm -hmm. for other things like your notes and your to-do list. And it has a really good quote. Um, you know, that's the thing is to have something that you can see regularly that's going to work for you. So I looked really hard and spent a fair penny on this. But so here's what you need to do. OK, you're going to take every hour that you've talked about. But, but what happens when we do that? 
okay, so I wrote down that I did this and I did that. And then I look at it the day and I go, okay, well, I did a lot of things today. All right. So that's not, that's not helpful. Okay. So here's what's helpful. Okay. When I was a teacher and in the public school and my kids were writing narratives, we talk about the five senses. Okay. Sight, smell, taste, sound, hearing. Okay. And, and the kids would want to make a really good piece of writing. And, but they didn't know what, what do I put in there? What am I missing? And so I'm taking, I'm, I'm going to circle back around. So what I had my kids do is I, I had them take five different colors and then they had to read their piece for sense of sight. Where did they have the sense of sight in their piece of writing? And let's say they used yellow for that. Then they would highlight those parts and then they would do sense of smell, highlight that with the orange or whatever color they make their own key. Well, at the end, when they're looking at the writing piece, what do they see? They should see a rainbow. They should see a, a disbursement of all those colors. And that's what makes it a strong piece of writing. When you think of a, a, of a movie like Forrest Gump or something like that has really good character development, it has all of those elements throughout the whole piece. Um, and so that's what we really need when we look at our time audit, okay? So if you take a color for H through S, Okay, you don't really have to have a color for your T because your time is you're tracking it. Okay, but if you have a color for your health, and let's just say that you have green for your health. All right, then when you do what you do today for your health, I just took a walk with my daughter. Okay, it wasn't a very long walk, but we went out in the sunshine, then I would I would highlight that green. Then if I've, I spent time with my daughter, we talked on our walk. So I would write down that other color. Maybe I use orange for that time. And so then at the end of the day, when you go back and you look what you did, you, you color code which areas you were able to do that day. Okay. Now here's where it's, here's where the personal part, and you'll know if at the end of the week, you look at your time audit and you see that on Monday, Wednesday and Friday, you got a walk in, you went to the gym, you did yoga, you went horseback riding, whatever it is that you want to do. And if you feel like, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good, then you know, personally, that's a good balance of your health. Other people would say three times is not enough for me. I was cranky, I was irritable, you know, and they need to change it up a little bit, right? And the same thing is with for, for health in terms of what you're fueling your body with, keeping track of what you're eating. What did you eat on certain days and how were you feeling? Maybe you had great interaction with people. Maybe you set clear boundaries. Maybe you did some personal growth. You worked on some hobbies that you're interested in, whatever, but you still felt really, really irritated. And when you look at the only area that you didn't do well in and didn't show up strong in is what you fueled your body with. Maybe you grabbed something fast food wise or whatever. So that time audit, although it does take a lot of time, it's crucial for you to be able to see how you're showing up hour by hour. And, and then it's, and then you're able to kind of tweak your, your next week. What are you going to do differently next week? Um, what have you, what have you done for service for yourself? What are you doing to pour in your own cup? And if you're not, then you can only nurture and pour into other people if you yourself are being filled. You're, if you're dehydrated, you're not going to be able to give as much as other people are, are able to get from you when, you when you're full. So that's, in essence, that part. Yeah, no, that was some major breakthroughs that I'm having. Sorry, a little flight, like nice. fireworks are going off in my brain. Yeah, no, that I love I love the highlighter idea of having different colors for everything because then you actually have something that's stands out not only to yourself, but you can really kind of get get more balanced. That that's incredible. Um, so do you have do you have two planners? Do you have like one for what you did and what you're gonna do? Like, or how do you look at tomorrow? Like, how do you look at the next day of planning? Yeah, I actually, I actually, you know, it's funny. I have a friend, she uses nothing but her phone for all of her planning. And I actually have a plan. I use my phone because I, you know, we're portable. So, you know, writing down, but I don't write down, like if I went out on a walk with my daughter today, I like to keep all that stuff in my regular planner. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes once you get into a routine, it's kind of like, I don't necessarily keep track that I went to Dollar General today. I know that I went to Dollar General today to get some hot dog buns. I know that I went to fill up my gas tank. And I know that in my budget, I have areas that that fits into, right? There was a time 
that I would be like, I need to make sure I write it as many to lay it down because I wanted to, you know, really get a handle on finances. But once you get into that routine of saying, hey, I need to move my body today. Hey, I need to spend some time with my people today. I need to do something for myself today. Once you get in that habit, it's kind of like waking up and having a healthy breakfast. You don't necessarily have to write it down. So, um, but when I start feeling like, okay, things are out of alignment here, I'm not feeling good, I'm not feeling like I'm showing up strong for myself, then you got to start writing it back down again. It's just like when you have to start writing down every bite and lick and taste if you're trying to get your, your, your weight under control and you're like, why can't I lose this last 10 pounds? And then you realize, oh, well, I just downed a handful of Swedish fish. That might be part of the problem, you know? So, so then you have to hold that accountability. Um, so I would recommend, you know, um, finding a coach, you know, or having someone who you're accountable with and making, making a check-in, making a, a weekly check-in, you know, say, Hey, do you want to do this accountability, this time audit with me? And, and let's talk about how we feel at the end of the week and what areas we were doing well in and what areas we weren't doing well in, and, and maybe brainstorm some other ideas. And, and that way you have that accountability when it's just you, it's oftentimes hard to, to, to have those breakthroughs because you're doing the same thing you've always done. Right. And mm -hmm. how simple is a highlighter? Not a big deal, you know, yeah. but it's just that little tweak of thinking of it differently. Yeah. I just feel like you've solved time management just now. Like you can just like mic drop like that. <laughs> it's so cool. Well, uh, thank do you you. Other, yeah. Do you have any other tips though on time management? Cause I mean, that's so powerful, but I'm just wondering if you have any. Yeah. Other so I think, um, especially for, people who, um, you know, one of the things that I realized um, was that I was doing things and I was continuing to do things that I should have let go of a long time ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask, so are you, are you a parent, Robert? Do you have any children? No, I got two dogs and a cat. That's about okay. <laughs> well, okay. So, so here's, so, so do you do a self-feeding? Do you have like self-feeding for your cat and dog, you know how like they have the things and the food is there and you know, the water um, is there. And okay. Well, I fill up so, the bowl. Okay. You fill up the bowl. Okay. Well, <laughs> so I think that sometimes what, what happens is like, at least for me as a mom, this was an area for time management. I had a list of all the things I felt I had to do and that I kept control over. Um, and until most recently, and my oldest is 17, he's a senior, my middle boy is a freshman and my daughter's in fifth grade. Okay. Now they have always helped with laundry that that's not, they know how to use the washing machine and the dryer. And, um, that was a whole nother story of, of kids when I taught middle school who were in eighth grade and didn't even know how to push the button. And I was like, well, we're going to make sure that that doesn't happen with my people. Yeah. Right. But, <laughs> but handing that over to them and saying, you know what, you're now in charge of your own laundry. Like, you know how to dress in the morning, you know how to take clothes off. So now you are now going to know how to clean your own clothes, go through drying them. And if they turn moldy because you didn't move them from the washer to the dryer fast enough, then guess what? You learn how to redo until things get better. Um, and so we kind of, we switched that up and I, and I took that off my plate that I don't have to carry that anymore. I don't have to, you know, show up for them. I've already shown them how to do that. And so I think, it, you know, depending on what you do in your life, there are other things that we just keep doing because we think we need to keep doing them. And maybe for some people, that's the setting the boundaries. It's like that time management and setting boundaries of saying no, like, well, this, I'm doing this and it's taking my time, but it's really not serving me like it did in a certain season. And it's okay to cut that out now. It's okay to say, you know what, I'm tapping out. I've done this. I've been here. It's been great, but I'm ready to kind of hand the baton to someone else. And that could be a time management thing. Because when you look at that long-term calendar, you say, how much time have I been using doing this, right? Um, do you order your groceries, Robert? Uh, <clears throat> no, I just go buy them at the store. Okay. But that's something so you could do. Here, I'm going to tell you this, it drives me, it's crazy. I shop at Aldi. Do you have an Aldi where you are? Mm -mm, sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. So an Aldi, you pack your own groceries. Okay. It it saves money on cost. It's like, you know, whatever. And I realized one time when I was at Aldi, every time I'd go, they'd be like, ding, 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 che you know, checking all your food, checking all your food. And if there were so many people in the store, they're like, it's like lots of dinging going on. 
and I'd be packing my stuff over on the other part and I'd be like frantic. I'm like, why do I feel so jazzed up when I'm in Aldi packing my groceries, you know? So I'd take the food off the, sh the shelf, I'd put it in the cart. I'd take it out of the cart, put it on the conveyor belt. Then they'd put it in my cart, I'd take it and put it in the bags, come home and then undo everything. It's too much touch time, right? Robert, it's just <laughs> yeah. too much touch time, you know? And so the other day, I had all through COVID, I still was going and buying my stuff at the store, you know, whatever. And the other day I said, you know what? I'm just going to order it online and see, see how yeah. this even works. Changed everything. Oh my I guess gosh. I, <clears throat> yeah. I ordered from Thrive Market, so I could probably do a little more if you ever heard of them. They're awesome. Yeah, no, I have, I have heard of them, but I haven't checked them out. But I mean, I, I mean, I did feel bad because I, when I went to go pick up my groceries, I didn't have them delivered to my house. I know that's a whole nother level that I could go into. Right. But you know mm -hmm. what? It made, I hate grocery shopping. I oh, hate that time of having to pick up stuff and put it down and just like too much time wasted. And mm -hmm. I mean, I'm grateful that I get to do that. Okay. But in the grand scheme of things, if I can do my menu planning, it also saves a lot of money because I'm not going to be picking up the Swedish fish, right? right. I'm, I'm, I'm less likely to get the stuff that, that isn't healthy for me. And, um, and then being able to put that in my calendar, like, okay, Sunday, I'm going to menu plan for the week. And then I'm going to order my groceries at the same time. And then I'm going to pick them up on this day and put it in my calendar and know that I'm going to do that. And so then it just becomes one of those routines that it's not a last minute thing. I'm not feeling right. frantic. Um, and so little things like that, that just don't seem to be that big of a deal. Now, for me, another thing for parents and for moms, especially is doing dishes. Okay, doing dishes are like the worst. It's like always doing dishes. I have friends that are like, Oh, my gosh, I feel like all I do is do dishes, especially with kids at home with homeschooling. Yeah. Okay, they were like, my I, I'm always doing dishes. It's, it never stops, you know. And so I don't do dishes. If you eat that off that plate and you use that fork and you use that cup and you know how to use and function with those things, then you can scrub them under the water and put them in the dish drainer and they can dry. Mm -hmm. Like we don't need to, to keep doing this, you know? And I had a friend and she's a businesswoman. She has three kids as well. And we were, I don't even know how we got in the conversation. And I said, yeah, we just, they just wash their dishes when they get from the table and they just put it in the dish drainer. And she's like, why have I never thought of that before? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like yeah. telling them they get one cup for the day. You know, why do you need to have another cup every time? Just one, here's your water bottle. There you go. You know, yeah. but so those are some little tips, not rocket science by any means, but. No, yeah. My, my girlfriend will love that. I learned that from somebody else today. <laughs> to do all those things. <laughs> it's so, it, it, it just makes so much sense. So <laughs> I think it's, a it does. Thing. You can't really hear it enough either because like sometimes you'll start doing the good things and then you'll stop <laughs> and then you got to come back, get back right. on, get more in alignment, you know, with balancing your things and uh, keep on moving forward. Well, yeah. what, and what happens is that when you take on, that's setting healthy boundaries. That is setting healthy boundaries because if you don't do it and you're always absorbing all of this extra work that is clearly able to be handed out to the masses, you then start resenting the people that you love. And when you resent the people that you love, then that also is problematic. Then you're not wanting to spend a whole lot of time with them when you were just cleaning up their mess or doing their laundry. And then you're so depleted, you don't have time to do anything fun for yourself. That last thing that you wanna do is go take a painting class or, or do whatever. You just wanna chill and watch Netflix and then your brain is just mush. You know, and that's most of the time it's an escapism. Right. And, and I love it. I, I'm watching a great series right now on Netflix. And, and I have to remind myself, you have this episode and it's yeah. fun. It's beautiful. It has beautiful cinematography. It's it's a great show. It's it's not, you know, anything crazy. Um, it has horses, which I love in the mountains. So it really, especially in a dreary time of the year, it, it does. It does fuel me. It does fill that part of me that loves that kind of stuff. But I have to set the time and say, okay, and now I'm ready to move yeah. on. Yeah. Otherwise you're watching till midnight and then you get up late and it just becomes a whole thing. And then it's a vicious cycle. <laughs> yeah. And that has happened. That has happened. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, it's so cool. Um, I'm all about like the listener's success. So is there any other tips that you have for success that we might not have tapped on yet? Um, you know, I think you need to find your why. Once you find your why of, of, the thing that's pushing you to do 
what you're doing and whatever that is, then it makes understanding the steps that you have to go that much clearer. And so I like, I love acronyms, you know, I have the things, so that's an acronym. I have why, W-H-Y, when you're looking for that why and you're trying to search, it's the W stands for what, and the H has a couple components. It's what has helped you in life, what has hurt you in life, life. It's what has hyped you in life and sometimes what has haunted you that you wish you could have changed and now you want to help others. So what has helped, hurt, hyped, haunted you? And when you look at that, that will help you to determine what your why is. And once you have that, then you need to decide how are you going to show up? And then you need to create your mission statement. So do you have a, do you have a mission statement, Robert? I'm just trying to help as many people as possible. All right. So that would be your mission statement. I just want to help as many people as possible. Um, my mission statement, I, was, I want to show up authentically, vulnerably, and listen to the hearts of others every day. doesn't matter if I'm at Aldi. It doesn't matter if I am at the post office. It doesn't matter if I'm on a call like this or Zoom like this. Um, and it has made the difference in the S in my things because I've been able to listen to the hearts of people, people all the way across the world and been able to show up for them. So having that mission statement is crucial. It's just like doing a time audit, checking up, checking in with yourself and saying, okay, am I living up to my mission? What is my mission? Why did I choose it? And if you're not, then maybe it's not the mission that you're really supposed to be on right now. Maybe you need to change your mission and that's okay too. Give yourself the grace to do that. Give yourself the permission to pivot because you have that. It's, it's free. You get to pick. Yeah. Find your why and then just go all in on it. What was the mm -hmm. way, what was the why in your acronym? What, you. And then you. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, you matter. So why not? Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, so I, I understand, you know, you you wrote a book, you got to publish, you're doing coaching and podcasting. So how, how are you balancing all these things to make sure that they, they come and they, you bring them into the world? Yeah. You know, my daughter is really an amazing, amazing old soul. I call her an old soul. And she is kind of the person who speaks to me when she can see that I'm a little off kilter and she will say, she said to me not too long ago, um, we like to drink coffee. We like to drink tea. And, you know, and she just turned 11. So she says, let's have a cup of tea, mom. So she makes me a cup of tea and we're sitting down and she says, mom, I need to talk to you. I feel like you've been doing a lot and everything you're doing is wonderful. You're doing wonderful, creative work and you're helping so many people. But I just want to ask, when did you go visit a friend lately? Mm. When did you have some quiet time for yourself? Your 11 year old daughter. Yes. Dang. Yes. Dang. Right. And so, That's so fun. my point is, <laughs> my point is you need to have people in your tribe, in your group who can say to you and ask you those tough questions. They're not saying it to, you know, you know, beat you up and say, Hey, you're burning the candle at both ends, but they really need to say it in a way that reminds you that they're really cheering you on. Um, and so, so that's true. So I have struggled with having so many things that I'm doing, which are all great. And I see, you know, for me, I'm a believer. So for me, I see God working in so many areas that when that's part of my mission, it's hard for me to stop that. So taking that step back and saying, okay, we're going for our walk today. It's first day. It's been super sunny and not bitter Arctic tundra outside. We're going out. The people can wait. You know, I, I'll throw my makeup on for my Zoom when I get home. I don't have to take forever to get ready for Robert, you know, and his listeners that this is more important to take this time with my daughter, that we can talk, we can you know, have the sunshine on our face, but being cognizant of making that time. Um, so so that, that's an area that I struggle with too, is, is, you know, technology and using it as a tool and not a taskmaster. Um, and I think especially in this time of COVID, it, it's, it can be difficult because it's just like a, we like breathe and, you know, our computer turns on and you're like, good morning, you know, so that's, so that's my tip for you. 
Yeah, no, I, I've been really kind of learning more that you got to recharge by doing stuff that you really love doing, you know, like list, just doing stuff that, that makes life that much better for you. You know, that's how you, how I recharge at least mm-hmm. if I just work because I, I could work every single day to the point where I just I burn out. I'm, I'm ex-military. So I'm just like, I'm, I've got this ridiculous work ethic, but it comes to a point where I need to do more things that are just fun. <laughs> and right. I find if I do more, those more often life becomes uh, more enjoyable and I'm ever to, able to recharge and be more active. Right. And you never know. Here's the thing. People think that when you are doing something um, separate from, from your creative work, really, you need to think of it more as using then that time to fuel yourself for the next thing. You never know the experience that you're going to have. I'm going to be writing about going to the doctor with my, my, my daughter last week, last Thursday, we spent the whole day at children's hospital. It was completely unforeseen. She's fine now, but it was like, I, I, I had to cancel everything on my plate, which was perfectly fine. I had no problem doing it. It wasn't like I was angry to do that. But the lessons that we learned last Thursday were powerful lessons for her. They were powerful lessons for me of being able to take a situation and using the perspective of that situation to really foster and plant other seeds that will have a harvest later on down the way that you don't, you didn't even know, you didn't even know you needed to go. I mean, she, we went to the hospital and there was a, 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 an EMT that put this little thing on her arm. It's called an IV hut. And the, the EMT was there. He was getting hours for, for his training. And he said, wow, I never even put these on a person before. You're my first one, but I've seen this contraption for my whole life. My aunt invented this. And we were like, what? And so he was like, yeah, she used to work at the neighboring hospital here in St. Louis. We have two big children's hospitals. And he said she was a nurse and she saw this need. And so for like 10 years, she had to get it in manufacturing and patented. And he says, when I was a little boy, I was stuffing the plastic bags with these contraptions and she was sending them out. So my daughter got to meet him and talk to him. And, and she got to think, oh, wow, like that's, that's an awesome thing that his aunt did. Now her full-time job is making and manufacturing and doing networking to help children not bump their IVs or pull them out when they're little toddlers. And um, it was just a really cool thing. So if if the only thing we did on that day was see that and foster that seed of possibility for the future, then, then it was worth it. But we had to look at it through that lens of opportunity and not oppression, right? Because it could have been really, really like, oh, we have to do this today. It's completely taking away everything. So just seeing it through that different lens, it made all the difference. Yeah, that's powerful. I love it. I love the earlier you said the space for grace. Like, I think that's kind of what it is. It's like, you have a little mm-hmm. space and, or for serendipity or whatever. Um, <clears throat> how's uh, your podcasting journey been? Is, it, is that kind of oh, new? Are you enjoying it? It is. It is so, so cool. Um, you know, I wasn't a big podcast listener. And so everybody comes into podcasting in different ways. You know, some people take classes and some people, I have a friend that she was on as a guest the other day, she had been waiting six years to start her podcast. And, and then some will say, so what about yours? And I'm like, well, I had a couple people that said, I'm really good at talking and people talk to me about things. Maybe you should start a podcast. And the first person I was like, I have all the things I'm working on right now. I don't need another thing. And then another person said, Hey, have you thought about starting a podcast? And then by the third person, I was like, okay, all right. I'm thinking I'm supposed to do this, right? (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah, I guess, I mean, I didn't need the two by four to hit me in the head, you know? Um, But what's been so amazing is I started with the people that I knew, that I knew had stories of Mm. perseverance and and resiliency. And, um, but I didn't want it to be a niche. I didn't say, I didn't want it to be just moms. I didn't want it to be, you know, just entrepreneurs. I wanted it for everybody because we all have these things that we have to balance. Doesn't matter who we are, what walk of life we are. And we also have real emotional journeys that we've been on. And I've had people who have talked about being survivors of domestic violence and forgiving to live. I've had people who, you know, have started small businesses and, and, and are also stay at home dads and they never saw that coming. That was never something in their, in their family line. So um, it's just been really cool to, to hear people's stories. Um, and, um, and just also the, the growth personally of not being afraid, like, okay, I guess I got to learn this program and figure out how to edit this. And, 
you know, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's just in time learning. That's what we call it. Right. And, um, and people have been so cool. They've been so, you know, they've given me such grace, you know, just to figure technology out and, and how it all, you know, has come to be. So I'm really, really enjoying it. Love it. And then, uh, for your coaching stuff, like who, who are you looking to coach and work with? Yeah. So for coaching, I want to be able to help anyone who just like yourself, um, feels like there's some things that they need to balance and they really want to show up and be their best self. The person they know that they have a lot to give, but they're just kind of struggling with managing it and doing it well. Um, so that could be moms, it could be dads, it could be young people who are even, you know, even college age kids who they're, they're trying to get their foot out there and they're not really sure how to do it. So um, like you, you just want to help as many people as you can. I just want to help the people that are ready to show up strong because um, everybody has that story to tell and everybody has gifts and talents. Um, but unfortunately, many people haven't been told that they have gifts and talents. And it's like that Christmas tree where the gifts are tucked way back in the, in the back and, and, you know, they just need someone to say, Hey, did you see that gift there? You, you haven't even unwrapped it. And they're like, wow, I didn't even know that was mine. I didn't even know that was for me. I didn't even know I had that. Um, so I just want to help people help people with their things. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. I think you're fighting a good fight. Um, I guess I got uh, one more question that I'm asking everybody, but uh, before we get into that, what, what was the international mission project? I'd like to learn a little bit about that. Sure, sure. So, um, so my book, All the Things, um, I wrote a chapter, my kids and I were making apple pie. And we were talking about we had gone to the apple orchard and picked the apples earlier in the day. And they said, Can we make apple pie? And I said, Sure. So we're making apple pie. And I had a good dear friend of mine, who had uh, passed away the year before, and she talked about gratitude. And she talked. Um, and so that was kind of in my brain. And so when we were making this apple pie, we started talking about, well, who who helped get all the things together for you to make this pie? Like how long did the orchard, you know, the guy who owns the orchard, how long did he have to tend these trees before we could even pick the apple? And where do we get, where do we get cinnamon from and all this kind of stuff. So um, that night, as I was writing about this experience with my kids and wanting to instill this gratitude that you don't just show up, you didn't get there by yourself, right? You, other people helped you along the way. Um, I looked up like, where does cinnamon come from? Well, lo and behold, one of the places is Sri Lanka. So I wrote in my book, does the cinnamon harvester in Sri Lanka realize that his life's work is going to go all the way around the world? It's going to be in cinnamon buns in Paris. It's going to be an apple pie in the United States. And that was where I left it. Okay. It was, I had a couple other things about Sri Lanka in there, but I figured I didn't know much about it. So maybe other people don't know either. Well, fast forward, I had made my mission statement, authenticity, vulnerability, listening to the hearts of others. And lo and behold, I got a friend request from a, a woman on the, we were on this challenge together and she was needing a business. So she knew that I was a business person and she asked me what I did. And I told her I was an author and a podcaster. And, um, and then I have another small business on top of my coaching. And so she said, well, I need a business. And so we started talking and I could tell she wasn't from the United States just by the way that her vernacular was. And, you know, and so I started asking her where she lived and what kind of gifts and talents did she have skills and lo and behold, she's from Sri Lanka. And I was like, of course she is. <laughs> and she told me the story about her husband who had been working for an elevator company before COVID hit and he had fallen. He was wearing his, luckily he was wearing his harness and he works on these tall buildings and he works making elevators and he fell, he got a concussion. And so he had been out of work for three weeks before COVID hit. Then COVID hit and they were destitute. Like her mother is ill and 70. Her father had passed away three years ago. Now her husband is out of work and she has a little baby who's seven months old and a little boy who's two and a half. And she said, ma'am, I need to do something for my family, but I can't work away from my family because I'm still, I'm still nursing my children. My husband just got a new job, but it's going to be a whole month before we get our first income. And at this point, we're video chatting now. We're, we're not just talking. She's showing me her house. She's showing me her babies. Um, and, she, and so I asked, so I asked my husband, I said, look, I want to send this woman some money. Never done this in my life, but I feel that I wrote this book to encourage people that they have gifts and talents, that all the things that are most important in life and parenting is not the things, 
but it's that feeling, that connection. And I, I want to be able to send her some money so that she knows that someone believes in her. And so my husband said, fine, do it. So I sent her $50. She took pictures of the receipt. She took pictures of the food she was able to get. The only thing they had had to eat at this point was rice, bananas, coconut, which they grow in there, all of them, and chilies, like oh, from wow. the garden. So that's what they'd been eating. And she was nursing both babies. And it was nobody could get any food in their, in their very, very poor town. Um, nobody was giving them food on credit at the shops because everybody was in the same spot with COVID. There's no government assistance, nothing. Um, and so she showed me this little shop. It was a little 10 by 10 cinder block building. And she said, this is what I want to do. She said, when my dad was a very, very successful farmer, but he had his first heart attack and he was building me this house for my dowry. And he had to stop building that house. And she showed me the house. It was just cinder block walls. Okay. And she said, he took some of those blocks and he made this little shop and he had a very crude grocery shop that brought in like $8 a day at the most. I mean, that was, it was just enough for him to feed his family, just enough. Um, but then he had a second heart attack and then he was hospitalized and she said he, he didn't, he didn't make it. And so she said, I was expecting my new baby at that time. So I couldn't work and we've used our money to pay for medical bills. And so we had no money to restock the shop or anything like that. And so I thought to myself, okay, I had just used the money that I had earned from my book to hire my coach. I used all the money. I had a thousand dollars and I said, look, I really want you to tell me what you need to make this shop what you want it to be. Write a business plan, write it out, like everything. And she said, okay. Now she didn't know I had hired a coach. She didn't know any of that kind of stuff, right? The next day she sent me a photo, paint, electrical, like the things that they would need for the shop to be, you know, what it needed to be. A thousand dollars to the penny. Of course it was. Because I didn't have a thousand dollars now, right? I mean, but I thought to myself, but I know people and I can tell a story. <laughs> so, and, and so here's another thing about when you start looking at balancing your things, when you're serving yourself, you have to know what you need. Okay. You wouldn't go to the restaurant and sit down at Applebee's and then get pissed off that the waiter didn't bring you your favorite drink. You wouldn't be like, well, heck, I mean, this isn't like cheers. They don't know your name. You don't just come in and they know what you want, right? You tell them, Hey, I would like a diet Coke light ice, or I would like a, a, an unsweet tea. Then they bring it. Right. So we have to know what we need to serve ourselves. For me, I needed to serve myself a healthy dose of, I don't give anything about what people think about validating what I'm doing. Because I had struggled with that for my whole life, like waiting for that rubber stamp of approval. Like I'd say, hey, I think I'm going to do this. And some people would say, hey, that sounds great. And other people might say, hmm, yeah, I don't know. And then I'd be like, wow, maybe I shouldn't do it. Well, let me just tell you, when you tell people that you're going to help someone halfway across the world in Sri Lanka that you met online to open a rural grocery store, just wait, okay? Because there's <laughs> lots of people that think you're a little crazy, Okay. But I didn't care because I had already wrote about Sri Lanka in my book. I knew that there was a reason that she and I connected. And I was willing to look at that and say, this isn't a coincidence. This is something that I'm supposed to do. And so I, so I reached out to my friends and I said, hey, you know, this, I'm doing this. You want, it, you want in? And yeah. some people said yes. Some people said no. From June 25th to July 15th, we got enough funds to fully fund the shop, but it didn't stop there because during that time, I was talking to her all the time and we video chat daily and there was a lot of rainy season that was happening and her house that she lives in now was literally water was coming in because the roof is over 30 years old. It's wooden. They have 26 types of termites in Sri Lanka. Fun fact for those of you who like bugs. Um, and I just felt that if that was me and every day I walked out of my house and I looked over and I saw this 
ruin of something that was a dream of my father's. And I had to look at the death of this dream every day. And eventually, Robert, eventually the walls, the integrity of them, it wouldn't be anything but rubble, right? Because of rain and not having a foundation. And I just thought, I can't, I can't do that. I can't allow that. And, you know, it's just money. Yeah. That's all you need. You just need money to fix this house. And so I just told my friend, I said, I want you to start pulling the weeds. And she was like, oh, ma'am, we cannot ask you to help us anymore. And I said, well, you're, I'm not going to give it to you. I literally don't have it to give you. If I had it, I would write the check and a story. But she didn't have indoor bathroom. She didn't have an indoor kitchen. And when it would rain so much, the back lean to that is her kitchen, she couldn't even cook that day. And I just thought, here she has a three-year-old and a one-year-old. Like, like, this isn't okay, you know? And, and she was hopeless. And um, so we're at the point now where we have a roof, we have a floor, we have um, all the electrical done, we have all of the masonry inside plastering done, and we have purchased the, the giant log that has been milled and the carpenter will start working on doors and windows. So we're not there yet, but um, we're getting there with, with the generosity of others. I, don't, I never know where the next donor is gonna come from. And I just say, you know what, Lord? You've got to help us. You've got us this far. And I know you're not going to just desert us. Um, but you know what it's doing is it's, in, it's, it's breathing hope into the life of someone. And, and that costs nothing. <sighs> that is literally free. Wow. And it's priceless. And she said to me, she said, sister, no one ever saw me before. No one has ever encouraged me. And think about it, Robert, when you are so poor that you're getting from day to day, no one's going to even be able to, Christmas tree, there's no gifts under there. Yeah. You know, you're just trying to make it. Um, and so we're, we're, it's, it's just been, some, it's the mightiest work that, that yeah. I've been doing. And, um, and so we're, and, and here's the cool part. When I asked her, okay, when the house is done, you know, hopefully in the next five months, when the house is done, what do you want to do with the old house? We're, we've patched the roof, okay? And so it's not leaking as bad. It will need a new roof eventually. Um, I said, do you want to make that a bigger shop? What do you want to do? And she said, no, we were thinking that in our country, a lot of women come from the other parts of the country to work. At, there's a chocolate factory near them or a garment factory. And they said, it's really hard for women to find safe places to live. So we were thinking about having it be like a boarding house where we could have women have a safe place to live. You know, they don't have to worry. And, um, and I said, do you realize sister that you're going to then be able to pour into eight women the way I've poured into you and the look on her face of, whoa, she was just like so excited to be able to help other women. You know, do they want to work in a garment factory the rest of their life? If that's what they want to do, fine. But guess what? They also have gifts and talents. They have other things. So to breathe that hope into those women, it's priceless. Yeah, wow. That's, ins that's inspirational for sure. <clears throat> so international mission project in Sri Lanka is looking like it could be a success. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh, man. That's a cool story, though. Thank you for sharing. It really welcome. makes you think, you know, what you can, how you can help people in the world. And how, right. And you don't have, have to go. Have so good. You don't yeah. have to go. You know, that's the thing. Like it's, it's, I'm like an international, you know, a digital international missionary, you know? Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's <laughs> that's cool. I will go. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, I am going, I'm hoping to go within the year. Um, COVID be gone. I'm going to Sri Lanka. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, why don't you tell everybody like the best ways to get in contact with you or maybe even how to donate to that cause or just all the stuff sure. that you have going on. Absolutely. So um, I have my web website is Kristen Lee Schindler.com. And on my website, I have my podcast, my link to my podcast with all the show notes and you can see the different guests that I've had. I have a link on there um, where you can actually donate to um, Sri Lanka. 
um, and, and you can donate through there. It says Aunt Sibby's, that's the PayPal account, because that I'm also a beekeeper. And so the only PayPal I had was connected to my beekeeping business. So I was like, well, that's gonna have to work. So um, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm working on, on creating a nonprofit called All the Things International. Um, it's, it's many layers and many hoops, um, but I feel like that's what I need to move on to. Um, so once that happens, then, then obviously it will be, you know, a, a nonprofit donation, um, tax deductible, but right now it's just a love offering. It's just a, Hey, I want to help this woman. And I, and I wanted to add, my friend is such a talented seamstress that we now are have, she is actually, um, sewing things and she's sending them to me. Um, I should be getting them this week and then I'm going to sell them for her and then send her the profit, which she should be able to, you know, really, really help with other projects like putting, like outfitting the bathroom and things like that. Um, but there are bigger costs like laying tile and stuff that's, that's really out of their, you know, out of their reach for, for where they are right now. Um, but so yeah, KristenLeeSchindler.com. I also have a Facebook group, um, all the things with Kristen Schindler um, and a Facebook page, all the things with Kristen Schindler. And I just like to pour on the inspiration there and just help people with balancing their things. And um, that's, we all have them. So I just want to help yeah. people to show up strong. That's so cool. Um, so yeah, the last question, I mean, you kind of answered it already, but not really. Um, so the question I'm asking everybody that comes on the get on the show is uh, what motivates you or what is motivation? Mm. What motivates me is really seeing other people truly embrace that they have gifts and talents, that they see their value and they see their worth and they see that their story matters because when we do that and we, and I help people to share their story or I share their story, it releases other people from the bondage of, of, of not feeling connected, of feeling like they're like, you know, just kind of like floating and that nobody understands where I'm coming from. Nobody understands how I'm feeling. And um, so that's what motivates me is really helping to people to be connected with the stories of others and listen to their hearts. Yeah. I love that. That's so cool. Actually, I do have one more question. I want to know about your beekeeping. How's that? Yeah. You like you sell honey or what do you do? I do. I do. So, cool. um, so before I stayed at home with my kids, I worked for a couple of years at a adolescent program, a Montessori program, and we had bees and it was part of our, our, our school. Uh, the kids did the research on them and they learned about the bees, the science behind the bees. Um, and when our program closed, the, the smaller kids, the primary and elementary kids, they were going to keep the bees. So I said, well, I'll take them and I'll just keep them. And so it's kind of grown into a really small um, little business. But this last year, it helped with the house. You know, the money yeah. that I made, um, I sent all directly, all my, my honey profits to um, Sri Lanka. So, um, cool. so I've also, I've also made lip, glo- lip balm in the past. And um, I make these lotion bars that are just made with beeswax and a couple other ingredients. So yeah, so Aunt Sibby's is the name of my, um, my honey business. And I'm hoping and praying I have five hives that went into winter. I'm hoping that they all survive winter um, because that will be a really sweet reward in the spring and summer. Um, because I'd like to be able to use that for, for doing other good and other, cause I'm, I'm starting to get connected with other women around the world. I have two different women in Pakistan that I've connected with, and they're trying to do amazing work for women and children there. So I'd like to grow, you know, and be able to help yeah. in other ways too. Yeah. I love bees and I love that you're helping people all over the world. That's so powerful. So, well, you have any last thoughts before we wrap up? I would just say first and foremost, to show up strong you have to pour and fill your cup and different seasons allow us to have different beverages that, that sustain us. Um, some seasons we're able to go away and we're able to take a vacation and, and in other seasons we're not able to, but pouring into your cup is not selfish. It is the only thing that's going to keep you from becoming dehydrated and drying up and, and, and being burnt out. Um, so think about it, make a list of the things that make you happy, that bring you joy, that, um, maybe things that you either always wanted to do, like maybe you want to take a beekeeping class. Maybe you want to do something and learn something that you've always been interested in, or maybe it's something that you used to do that you loved that has to look a little bit different. I used to ride horses. I had my own horse. He passed away when my first was, you know, just a couple of months old. So that chapter kind of closed. 
but I still love going to barns and just smelling the horse smells and brushing horses. And that fills me up. Right. Um, so just, you know, make a list and give yourself that time to, to pour into yourself. And it, I promise you, it's not useless time. It really is important and crucial for your work. That's so cool. Uh, well, thank you so much for coming here and uh, being on the show and thank you everybody for investing time and listening to us. And, uh, I'm sure we all learned something and we're all more interested and going to go Google Sri Lanka. <laughs> there you go. It looks, it looks like a papaya right under India, just so that you know where you're looking on the globe. And now we know, yes. <laughs> uh, but, but be sure to like subscribe um, and check out her website and her podcast. Oh, and can they get the book on Amazon or where can they buy their book? Yes. You actually can get the book on Amazon. You can get it on any place digitally. You can order it. Um, Amazon's the easiest. And it's also in Kindle version. And I did the audio book. I have it. Um, I, I narrated that myself. So that's available on Google play as well. And my podcast, all the things with Kristen Schindler, that's any podcast platform. It's on Apple podcasts. It's Anchor is the, is the platform that I use to edit and stuff, but it's, it's available everywhere. Spotify. So. Cool. So you, you narrated your own audio book. Was that I hard? did. Was I it did. hard or how, how'd that go? Well, so here's the funny part. I told you I launched my book. I had my book signing amid COVID. And so here I have written a book about all the things about parenting. And now my, my person, my avatar, the person I think is going to read my book is now home with all their people doing all the things. They don't have time to read it. Right. And so, uh, <laughs> so I'm like, this didn't really work out that good. Um, and so my husband said, well, you know, maybe you need to do the audio book now. And so, um, so when churches were closed, um, I actually had a friend, he, I, I'm on the worship team and I sing and he plays guitar, but he also does videography and he does sound actually. And he does sound work and he was out of work. And so he couldn't travel, he couldn't do anything. And so I'm at rehearsal one day, um, you know, before everything shut down. And I said, Hey, um, do you, have you ever recorded an audiobook? And he goes, um, no, but I record sound. So it's basically the same thing. I mean, that's just him. He's hilarious. And I said, so I said, I have an idea for you. So once everything did get shut down, I called him and I said, Hey, I want to record this audio book. And our pastor said, Hey, if you want to use the space, then just make sure you guys are socially distanced. And so my friend set everything up and I texted and said, I'm here. And so he was like 10 feet away and I just stepped up to the mic and he had the book and he just followed along and, um, and I recorded it and then he gave me all of the, the digital files and I used a company called find away voices also not affiliated with them, but, um, other than the fact that I use them, but they, um, it was so easy. It was really, really easy. They have us, you know, tell you exactly what you need to do. Um, and it was just a lot of fun, you know, it was a lot of fun yeah. to be able to narrate it and, and, and be able to share, share it that way. And, and I, and I also, um, I'm a mom of two dyslexic learners. And so for me, I wanted to put my audiobook out there because I know that there are moms that not only don't have the time, but that's just not their preferred way of, of getting information into their ears. And so I wanted to be able to provide it in such a way that, that it was accessible to, to any kind of learner. That's so cool. Have you sold quite a few audio copies? I haven't really sold as many audio copies, but I think part of the problem is that when you go to Amazon, it doesn't link it to your audiobook. So really, you know, marketing and, and, and sharing the book, I've, I've shared a lot that it's on there, um, but most people will just buy the pa paperback or the Kindle version. It's available on Kindle as well. Yeah. Well, you're full of wisdom. I really appreciate it. I'm going to have to listen to your podcast for all my other questions. There you go. There you go. Well, I, you know what? Um, you can be a guest as well, and we I can talk that. about how you balance your things and about everything that you're doing. And um, yeah, I'd love to have you. All right. Well, thanks again, everybody, for listening. And uh, be sure to like, subscribe, and, and share this with uh, anybody you think that could really get some value out of today's episode. Thank you.